This Father's Day, I'm sending a personal message to all the fathers. I'm here as an unofficial representative of a club that no one wants to be a member of, families of innocent victims of terror. We lost our son Taylor on March 8, 2016, in a Palestinian terror attack in Jaffa, Israel, and immediately became members of the club you can never quit. Our son was a good person. He led a good life. He was poised to do great things. Taylor was an Eagle Scout, earned Scouting's God and Country Award, and was a West Point graduate. He led his troops through two combat tours, one to Iraq and Afghanistan, bringing them home safely to their families. He was a 28-year-old graduate student when he was viciously stabbed to death. In his too short life, he had accomplished his mission. He had made the world a better place for his friends, his classmates, everyone he came in contact with. As I was going through his personal effects, I found a copy of a short inspirational talk he had given shortly before his first combat deployment. He finished the talk by sharing his priorities. He said, God and family first, everyone else second, myself last. That was Taylor. Shortly after Taylor's death, we were shocked to learn that about the Palestinian Authority's pay-to-slave policy written into their laws. This policy rewards a Palestinian terrorist or their family if they die committing the crime with a monetary stipend for life. The amount is determined by the severity of the terror. The worse the act, the higher the reward. I was also shocked to learn that for many years the U.S. had been giving the Palestinian Authority hundreds of millions of dollars in humanitarian funding, which was being put towards this pay-to-slave policy. The fact that our U.S. tax dollars were being misused to support terrorism is unacceptable. Thankfully, due to the hard work of Sandra Gerber, a successful, compassionate, and well-respected member of the New York financial community, South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham, and Colorado Congressman Doug Lamborn, the legislative process to end U.S. funding of pay to slay began. And on March 23, 2018, the Taylor Force Act became law. It was through the essential support of organizations, politicians, and individuals that this effort was successful. It was and remains a nonpartisan issue. It is a moral question. Should a terrorist be rewarded by the Palestinian Authority for killing innocent Israelis and Americans? No. People have asked us where we found the strength to continue after losing Taylor. Our daughter, my wife Robbie, and I found our strength in the love, support, and encouragement from the many organizations and individuals that we have shared Taylor's life and the horrific policy of pay to slay that took him too soon. Taylor was born on June 21st, 1987, Father's Day. This year, his birthday also falls on Father's Day. My advice to all families as you celebrate this day, remember what a gift your sons and daughters are and tell them you love them. They know, but it is good for all to hear it often. Thank you.